welcome to Project 8 Bootstrap Responsive Page and this is our last tutorial in our textbook. Bootstrap is vital for responsive page design. It is an HTML and CSS based framework that allows much faster and easier web development. Responsive page design is pretty much the standard and is expected now for most companies they want a responsive website that is viewable in various screen sizes. Bootstrap recognizes four different screen sizes, and we're going to take a look at those different screen sizes. This is the extra small size, which is displayed when it, the screen is less than 768 pixels. Next size would be greater than 768 pixels up to 991 pixels and that's the small size so the extra small size shown in the green display here this is called the visual media query area and this is for smartphone sizes the small size would be for tablets the medium size is about 992 pixels up to about 1200 is for desktops and then the large desktop size over 1200 display pixels. Bootstrap uses a grid of 12 columns and that is the underlying grid structure where you can place your layout on top of and the 12 column grid is used, has been used throughout de print design as well. And there's actually a lot of flexibility, a lot of uh, great design that use the 12 column grid. Bootstrap uses predefined classes to determine the size of each column element on each size display. And media query is a way of defining different CSS code to apply in the different situations for the different element sizes on the display sizes. Let's create our bootstrap page. Download the Boulevard student files from the web page from Against the Clock, BLVD, and set up your site named Boulevard to your local root folder. Once you do that, you can select a new page, a new HTML page, select bootstrap, create a new bootstrap page, do not select include a pre-built layout, so we're going to build this page from scratch. Click Customize to take a look at the options here. And we're just going to keep our default here at 12 columns. The gutter between each column will be 30 pixels with the standard small, medium, and large sizes. Go ahead and click on OK, and I've already set mine up here. And then save it, going to File, Save. Um, you will just select File Save and name it index.html and I'm just called mine index1. Once you do that, you'll see next to the source code next to your HTML page. You have a bootstrap CSS style sheet and then two jQuery JavaScript files. In your files panel, you can see the JavaScript folder and a fonts folder. The bootstrap CSS in the CSS folder contains all the predefined classes for the various responsive page elements. The fonts folder includes web fonts that are used to create bootstrap icons. And in your JavaScript folder, these files help to provide some of the responsive design functionality in browsers that do not have the HTML5 functionality. With your split view, we can review the code and you can see the link href tag shows the bootstrap CSS style sheet is attached. And then above that we have the meta tag with meta name viewport. Viewport is the visible area of a web page on a specific device. Using this tag, the page width is set to match the available screen width. So the actual page content is not reduced to fit in a smaller page. I'm clicking on Live View so we can see our visual media queries. The green bars use only a max width value. The blue bars use both a min width and a max width value. And then the purple bars 
use only a min width value. The min width values show a right facing arrow and the max width show a left facing arrow. So here we have our extra small size, again small, medium, and large. Click the green bar and you can also drag the scrubber to change the size. Click the second purple bar labeled 992 pixels and that displays the medium size layout. Click the third purple bar to display the large size layout and then click in the document to insert your cursor onto the page. A regular container element has a fixed width and the different layout sizes. A container fluid element has no defined width property and it can dynamically resize with the browser window. Go to the insert panel and select bootstrap component and insert a regular container. We go to split view and look at the code. A div class container has been inserted, so a div with a class selector of container. Go to CSS Designer and click on Current. And that displays only those selectors that affect whatever you have selected on the page. The CSS panel lists the selectors in reverse order from what they'll actually appear in the CSS file. The last class selector, container selector, is active. And then in the, when you select that, you'll see in the at media query, the global text is in bold. Global means that this selector does not exist within a specific media query. All the defined properties apply regardless of which display size is active. Click the third container class right above it. And now the 768 min width pixel text is highlighted and that is the active media query for this selector. If we take a look at properties and check show set, you can see that the width is set to 750 pixels and this is grayed out so you cannot change these properties in the CSS bootstrap file because it's locked so it's a read only file and we really don't need to make changes to our bootstrap files. We can add additional selectors um, in, in the, another CSS file, which we'll do later. So the line through this width property means that the property has been overwritten by a later selector. So let's look at the container class above that. And in properties, it has a width of 970 pixels and that also has a line through it. So that property also has been overridden. So the top class selector is the one that is overriding the one after it. And so this one is set to a width of 1170 pixels and there's no line through it. The last container we can see some properties it's set with the padding and margins. Back to live view, click on the second purple bar labeled 992 pixels to the medium size layout. And with the container div selected, go to your insert panel and select the grid row with column button, select nest, and change the number of columns to two. We are going to insert two columns inside a div nested inside the current div container. Now you can see a dotted line in the middle showing us two columns. Each column is set to six columns in the grid layout because it's set to an underlying grid of 12 columns. Take a look at the code in split view and so we can see the div given a class selector called row. Within that div is another div actually two divs, so each column is in its own div, and it's given a class of column medium six, telling us there's six columns within each of those divs. Click the max width 767 pixel query, our extra small size layout. Bootstrap follows a mobile first approach, which means the design begins with the smallest display size. Now click the largest display size, 1200 pixels. Column settings apply unless 
and until they're overridden by a different setting in a larger display size. Click the medium display size and with the existing row div selected, click on the insert panel again and the cl click on the grid row with column button. Select after and keep the default of three columns and click OK. So we now we've added another div with three columns after the two column div. Select the second row, insert another grid row with column, this time change the number of columns to one and choose the after option. Now we have a third row with a single column. Click to select the left column in the first row. If you add a new column element to an existing row, it adopts the same class settings as the existing columns. This column has six columns inside, and this column also has six. Click the offset column handle to the left of this first column and drag and release when you've offset it by one column. You can only change the size according to the column sizes. Now this is still six columns but we moved it over another column and once we did that the next column has dropped down and formed another row because we have a six column div here, another six column div plus one column offset which equals 13 columns and we can't have 13 columns in a 12 column grid. So the extra column drops down and creates a new row. To offset that, we can resize this column using the right handlebar and drag it until it's five columns. And now we have three rows again. Select the second column in the first row and resize it until it spans five columns. So now we have two five column divs. Save your file. Select the left column div in the first row. In your insert panel, look for your responsive image button and select default. When you place an image in a Bootstrap web page, you want your images to be responsive also so that they will change as your screen sizes changes. In the position assistant, choose nest and we've inserted an image inside the div. Click to select the left column in the first row and insert a responsive image. Select the default if it's not already selected and choose Nest. Now we have a placeholder image inside that first column. Using the Properties panel, and with your Files panel open, use the pointer in the SRC field to point the image with your images folder open to the Boulevard logo PNG. The logo is placed in the first column. In the alt text field, type in the Boulevard. It's always a good practice to use the alt text to increase search engine optimization. Now click the 767 display size to show the extra small size layout. And we can see the logo in the different display sizes. Select the medium 992 pixel display size and save the file. If Dreamweaver warns you about the required files, go ahead and click OK so that you can copy those files into your site folder. Open the content HTML page it's a good idea to place all your content on a separate page for easy access and when you're done adding the content you can delete the page or you can cloak it so that you don't have to upload it to your FTP server. Now open the split view to access the code and highlight the lines 3 to 5. Make sure you include your code with the tags. I'm going to do a command C to copy and go back to the index page. Select the second column, the div class column medium five, since we changed that to five columns, and insert your cursor in between the closing tag and the opening tag, in between the two column divs. Paste the text with the code, and now we've pasted that content from the content HTML page into this column. 
Go back to the content page, select line 1722, copy, select the next div column, and paste. Back to the content page, select lines 26 to 32, copy, and paste into the third column div. Back to the contents page, select the footer text on line 36, and copy and then scroll all the way down to paste that into the last row div. Now we can select the images and add the class to ensure that the image is responsive. So type in image and select image responsive, hit return. And in my properties panel, I'm going to point to each image. That first image, shops, and the third one is fireworks. You can view your layout in your different display sizes. Click the min width medium uh, 992 pixel size and open the CSS designer panel. Select all mode and click the add sources button to choose attach an existing CSS file. The browser processes information in the order that it's reached from first to last. So when we're going to attach a second CSS style sheet to this page because we don't want to change our bootstrap CSS style sheet. We want to add, we're going to browse to the design CSS style sheet, add it as a link and click OK. And now you see that style sheet is attached. Select the design style sheet. If it is second in the list, it means that the selector properties will override the properties of the same name selectors in the first CSS file. Click to select the shopping H2 element. I'm going to go back and copy lines 9 to 13. As I I pasted in the wrong text in that first column. I'm going to replace the special events text with the shopping text. Select the shopping now H2 tag element and in the tag selector the div tag is immediately before the H2 element. So we want to select the entire div and then use the element display to add to or apply the class feature section. Remember to add the period for the class to go back and update that image for shopping and repeat those steps for the other H2 elements. So, so now I've applied the feature section class to the other two columns. We can preview the layout in the different display sizes. Look at the design CSS file in the code pane and locate the H1 selector. Change the font size property to 20 pixels. Locate the P selector and change the font size property to 14 pixels. Then locate the feature section P class selector and change the font size property to 12 pixels. These font sizes will be more appropriate for the smaller display sizes. In the CSS Designer panel, select the Design Style Sheet and then add in the Meet at Media Query section. We're going to define the conditions in which the selectors in the query will apply. Click on the Add Plus button, leave the media at screen for the first condition, and then the next condition, select Min Width of 768, hit tab, and click OK to create the media query. In the code pane, find the open curly bracket of the media query statement. See here where it says at media, the screen and the min width set to 768 pixels, the font size 
38 pixels, the P tag set to 18 pixels, and the class selector feature section set to 15 pixels. Go ahead and add that code in after the curly bracket. You only want to change the font size based on the media size. You can review the font sizes in the different display sizes. So you see the font size displays smaller in the extra small size for H1. And to save your CSS file, you can go to File, Save All. The HTML page code is exactly the same in all the different variations of our web page layout. But if we want to hide certain elements, Bootstrap allows you to use a CSS helper class so that you can hide certain elements in the different display sizes. Select the logo image at the top of the page. In the insert panel, in the responsive image button, I'm going to select the after button to place another image after the logo. Then use the properties panel to point to the Boulevard Logo 90 PNG image to place the 90 degree rotation version of the logo. In the alt text, type in the Boulevard. And then show the extra small size. With that new logo selected, add the class dot hidden extra small. We're going to hide that version of the logo in the extra small display view. Then go to the next size up and select that logo again and add another class dot hidden and the small select the small size to hide that logo in this display size. For the medium size, we're going to select the horizontal logo and this time we're going to add the hidden class for the medium size for the small size of the logo. We want the rotated logo to be viewable in the medium and also in the large size. We're going to add the hidden class in the large size. In the large display size, you want to click on the logo and then select the entire div and resize this entire column using the right handle so that it spans only two columns. And now the logo is lined up to the column in the next row. For the next div, remember to select the div element in the tag selector. For this content, we're going to adjust this column size so that it occupies seven columns. So we're going to increase the width until it shows it's seven columns. So you can adjust the layout and the size of divs and elements by adjusting the column sizes. Now we can look at the medium size, select the div for the logo, and adjust that column size to two columns to the left, and select the div for the next column, and increase that by two columns. And now we can take a look at these displays. I turn off hide live view displays to view them in the different display sizes. And that concludes